Hey guys, um, I recently had a few people asking me about how they could make more complex geometry, more detailed geometry and create more complex shapes, you know, so today I want to explain to you just a few things about the grid in Radian and also about edge and vertex edi um, editing. So go ahead and open Radian. And this time um, we are not actually going to use the map file from the previous episode because we aren't necessarily going to have to compile the map and open it in Wolfcam. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a simple ground plate here. Um, and give it a few textures so this is just you know for, sh for showcase and it, you don't actually have to do all of this uh, yourself it's okay if you just follow the tutorial and learn those things because it isn't really a whole lot I'm just going to show you a few things so I'm going to make a bunch of walls alright so first thing you should know is when you make a map you should always place your first brushes around the center of origin which, which is this small L here um, with the a X axis label and Y axis label that's because it's important um, for visibility you don't have to understand it in detail just remember that you need to or you should actually have your map lay close to the center of origin so yeah um, after that what I want to show you is the different grid sizes in Radian. So you can see it right now. We got the default grid size with the uh, which is um, eight um, units width and eight units height for the smallest um, square block you can create. But you can actually go smaller and bigger than this, and you do that by using the num keys, the numbers keys. Um, on your on the left left side of your keyboard, so um, the default grid space with eight units with an eight units height um, can be activated by pressing four. So if you press four now, obviously nothing will happen because you got those grid sides already selected. But if you press five, you can see um, the grid changes and the smallest block size gets larger. So if I press 4 again for the default you can see this is smaller than this which appears when I press 5. So this now is 16 units width and 16 units height. But you can also go smaller than this by pressing 3 as you might have already guessed. So you can see now 3 is 4 units width and 4 units height. And you can go down to a minimum of 1 unit width and 1, units, uh, and one unit height. Alright, so uh, you can't go smaller than this, but, or actually you can, but you shouldn't, because it will mess things up and for larger constructions like walls or floors you can you should always stick to the default size of eight units width and eight units height just because the smaller you go with your grid size the more likely you are to produce leaks so the more likely you are to not have your map um, sealed off from the void and run into issues just because 
you know it's harder to keep an overview over the small brushes rather than um, large brushes um, another thing is that um, if you work with geometry small like these cubes be sure to always convert them to detail brushes using control and M um, simply because that's important for optimization if you got small details always convert them to detail using control and M you don't have to understand why exactly you have to do it just keep it in mind when you work on your map you can check what brushes you currently converted to detail by pressing control and D which filters detail brushes alright so I'll make a bigger cube then to explain to you a few things about vertex and edge editing so as you know know this is a regular, cu uh, regular cube which consists of um, 12 edges and 8 edge points those edge points um, are called vertices in radiant the singular would be vertex so this is one vertex and a group of edge points is vertex points and what I want to show you is that you can not only edit brush by um, dragging it and resizing it like we have did in the previous videos or using the clipper tool to cut it in half you can also um, edit the edges and vertices so to do this simply select our brush and press E so as you can see there are a few blue dots appearing on our brush and those dots are the edge points you can see there is one point in the middle or in the center of each edge and if you now left mouse button click on those points and drag them you can see you can drag this edge around and it also works in the um, in the 2D viewports you can see this edge here is should be this edge in the editor if I'm right and yeah you can see you can left mouse button click on it and drag it around you can use this I don't know as an alternative to make angled corners for example or like you know 45 degrees hallways like this you would make a 45 degrees wall like this by um, moving the edges and then scaling the brush so if I undo this now we are going to go back to our um, original cube so yeah once again to edit the edges of your brush press E and that will enable the edge mode and in the edge mode you can control these edge points in the center of each um, edge of your brush and drag them around using left mouse button but take care um, so you don't you know merge two um, uh, edges because that will cause bad brushes and you shouldn't do that like this for example so always keep an eye on not mer merging two edges all right then the next uh, the next and last thing I want to show you is how to edit vertices this works with a, um, a similar uh, principle basically you select brush again and press uh, V for vertices and you can see there are dots appearing again but this time they are green so you can again left mouse button click on one of the um, dots to select um, the edge point between these three edges and then you can simply left mouse button click on it and move it around and as you can see you are doing nothing more than editing this um, single vertex of the cube and you can see um, the edges that are next to the vertex, vertex point are moving along with it 
So this is not used as often as edge editing. In most cases you would use it for more complex stru uh, structures like making rocks or terrain for example. Or if you need some really fancy geometry in your map, but most of the time you wouldn't use it. One last thing I want to show you is how to move multiple vertices. So press escape to deselect the vertices and then press V again to re-enable the vertex mode. And now you can... Okay, actually you can, apparently. So this is strange. So yeah, apparently you can't select um, multiple vertices yet in 1.6. So that's probably a feature that's going to be added soon. It used to be in 1.4 and 1.5, but apparently it doesn't work yet here or I'm just missing out on something right now. However, um, if, it ever, if I ever get it working, I will get back to it. But for now, this is all you need to know really, the different grid sizes using the num keys, one, um, is 1 unit, 2 is 2 units, um, 3 is 4 units, 4 is 8 units and 5 is 16 units and then for brush editing um, E for the edge mode and editing edges and B for the vertex mode and editing vertices alright so sorry about this little um, inconvenience right there um, in the next video I really want to cover curved surfaces now. I'm probably going to split up the curved surfaces video in two parts. One would be um, creating and editing curved surfaces and the other would be texturing curved surfaces. Alright, so until then, have a good time, bye bye.